Hey everyone, welcome to the Three Way Podcast. What's going on? I'm Jerks, and that's JP Langster 101. Damn right. And the I don't know what he kind of gang sign that is. Number one cheaters. <laughs> Number one cheaters. Carlos, aka <laughs> Public Enemy 59. What up, uh, boys? <laughs> All right, so let's uh, let's start off with pop culture. We, we actually have a beefy like like podcast today. Um, yeah. All right, so this oh, oh yeah, shit! I don't host. You can tell I don't host. <laughs> <laughs> pop, 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 culture. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we have culture. a leaked image that popped up. I, I believe it was on Sunday, and then like they ended up just releasing the trailer. But Correct. Morbius. Morbius is the next uh, what Marvel movie slash Sony movie. Okay, and, can someone explain yeah. to me who or what Morbius is? <laughs> so he's the he's a, uh, a Spider Man oh. anti anti oh. villain. Oh, oh, oh okay. So he, if you want more information, just oh. Wikipedia him. He is in the Spider Man <laughs> world. Oh. He is a villain in there. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I'm actually looking forward to it. So we know that the the main. Uh, the main person playing this, the actor, is um, the guy Little. from uh, Jerry Little, the guy, uh, the Joker. Jerry Little Redemption coming back from the yeah. ashes of the Joker to reincarnate reincarnate himself or as the new v- villain in the MCU. Anti-hero. I like it. What a comeback! Well, I mean. I don't know shit about Morbius. No Obviously. one really knows shit about Morbius. He's supposed but... to be like a, a uh, vampire. He's yeah, no, but he's supposed to be like a uh, Marvel's version of Dracula, since obviously they couldn't use Dracula, so they brought they've created Morbius. But uh, yeah, Jared Leto looks sexy in this. I'm not. Uh, I'm like whatever about it. But Looking mighty fine. Uh, yeah, it looks interesting. It looks kind of cool. I'm not going to lie. It looks kind of cool. I mean, the, the, it was a teaser trailer. It, it didn't give too much. Uh, mm-hmm. There was a clip where he's walking by in Spider-Man, a poster or something. The Spider-Man's in the background. Oh, yeah, but it's like the Sam Raimi suit Spider-Man. That was kind of weird, too. Uh, well, I mean, I it's, that's what it shows, but I don't think so. I, they're going to tie up the world. Keep in mind that Blade for Marvel is in the works as well, so mm-hmm. it does tie in with... Morbius, and so Spider Man's going to be tied up there. And also, not only that, um, who's in, uh, Doctor Strange is also involved with that, with uh, with Morbius. So it's it's crazy. It's a tie-in. I, so I'm and then uh, yeah, and then they showed the villain from the uh, mm-hmm. Homecoming, right? Movie. Uh, what's his name? Vulture. Mm-hmm. Oh Vulture. yeah, uh, Michael Keaton. Michael yeah, Keaton. showed up in the trailer. Um, and then another thing that uh, I wanted to know is that they're working with on, on this film in conjunction with Sony. No, uh, Sony's working Sony... in conjunction with Marvel. So yeah. Morbius is considered part of the Spider-Man, Spider-Man franchise, so correct? Therefore, they have the rights to it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, interesting. Right. Okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But anyways, moving you... on. Uh, let's go to the Oscars. Whoa. The it's 2020 Kevin, Kevin Hart yeah. nominations Kevin... are out. No, uh, actually, they're gonna. I think they're gonna do the same thing they did last year, where it's just various different people doing like so, different things. So it's gonna be boring. Uh, no, it was pretty good last year. That was fun. Nah, I watched it. Nah, chill, uh, but chill. this year, yeah, this year's nominations are out. And uh, I mean, the big, the big boy, the 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 one that everybody really cares about is the Best Picture nominations. And well, we got Ford vs. Ferrari, The Irishman, a Netflix movie, but it was also in theaters for like a little bit. Jojo Rabbit, The Joker, mm. or Joker, Little Women, Marriage Story, uh, that was also on Netflix. Actually, a very good movie. I saw that one. Nineteen Seventeen. I need to watch that one. I heard it's really good. Is, yeah. uh, what's Bro, about, what's I saw Nineteen Seventeen. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, that movie blew me away. All right. Blew me the fuck away. Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. I uh, haven't seen that one yet either. And Parasite. It's okay. It's okay. Par- Parasite supposedly is really good too. I need to watch that one too. I heard, I heard But there were some hashtag Oscars so white, a.k.a. <laughs> Oscar snubs because actually what was it the Golden Globes were like the week before the nominations and like everybody's like all happy about it you know Ricky Gervais is roasting everybody there and my favorite apparently like there was like some kind of like outrage Uh, I don't know uh, I'm not really I didn't really follow it because I really don't care you know I don't like to bring negativity to my positive life you know what I mean 
<laughs> and I'm like, what? What are they? What were they like complaining about? Like, so basically, what ended up happening was there's not a lot of quote unquote diversity. Uh, they okay. feel like there were some uh, women directors um, who should be in it. I don't know why. Most of the movies that came out would suck. Um, so there's that. And then uh, they yeah. also and they also said there was not a lot of black actors. Uh, um, well, from from this article from Polygon, they're saying. Uh, it's bizarre that none of the cast of Parasite were nominated, even though the movie picked up nominations for writing, original screenplay, production design, international feature film, film editing, best director, and best picture. Actually, that is kind of weird. It got all those nominations, but none of the none of the actors in that film actually got nominated for anything. Parasites. Uh, Parasite. It's a. I think it's what? a Japanese movie or something like that. I forget. No, what? it's based off an anime. No, what I'm saying, the director and all that, they're not American. What I'm uh, pissed about. Me, Public Enemy 59, one of the greatest voices in pop culture, right? One of the leading voices in pop culture <laughs> uh, is Uncut Gems. Like, why mm. was Uncut Gems? Oh, yeah, Uncut Gems is not, another one that was snubbed. It's not, you know, talk. I mean, it's being talked about. A lot of people are heralding it as a great piece of film making, and yet snubbed why because adam sandler a comedian right finally shows his chops in the acting world kind of shows all these fools how do you do it but you don't want to give this guy these design nominations uh, that's I'm, where i'm i mean let's uh, let's keep in mind that, that at one point in the oscars it was saving private ryan and what's that story about julio and romeo uh what shakespeare in love and Mm -hmm. They voted for Shakespeare in Love, and Shakespeare in Love won Best Picture, and that was one of the most stupidest things I've ever seen in my life. We all know. So we probably There's been Ryan. other ones that have pretty been pretty stupid. Yeah, so, but, so uh, to uh, me, it's like uh, whatever. Uh, Parasite is from a South Korean director. Um, Uncut Gems. I haven't seen it, but apparently it released December twenty fifth on Christmas. I mean, I don't know. Uh, did Uncut Gems do anything? Oh man, the Golden Globes. I, I forgot if it did anything there. Nope, uh, nope, there as well. Well, then it's, so, it's not it's not anybody's as... fault then. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. No, what I was wrong. <laughs> but yeah, You're taking but... their side jerks. Anyways, moving on. No. <laughs> Game of Thrones spinoff series, House yes. of Dragons, is been uh, is been delayed. It's been no. pushed back. It's it's pre it's going to premiere in twenty twenty two, so it was pushed back one more year. But apparently they wanted to fix some things, so it will premiere in 2022. Which, if my guess is correct, as Game of Thrones came out in April, uh, it probably will come out in April 2022. I am excited for this. This is basically about the Targaryen family. Um, I'm glad that there's not a book on it, so they won't fuck the show up, so it's something unexpected. Mm -hmm. um, but it is going to be House of Dragons. So it's going to be based on the, Targar uh, the Targaryens and what happened and... You know, the Mad King and things like that. I'm pumped up for it. HBO is just doing this, I believe, as a money grab, but it's a good money grab because people are going to watch it. Uh, I know Lofa's going to watch from, it. From The Verge, uh, Game of Thrones fans excited for House of Dragons, the upcoming prequel series HBO announced late last year. Should prepare to settle in for a bit of uh, – should, should – Prepare to settle in for a bit of a wait. According to HBO's president of programming, Casey Bloys, B-O-O-Y-S, Bloys, the series likely won't air until sometime in 2020, 2022. So uh, I guess that's their tentative date, I, I guess. Uh, supposedly they still haven't found any uh, uh, cast yet. There's nobody casted yet. Um pfft. I don't know. I think I mean HBO is, is one of those companies too that tends to take their times with some of these things. So I'm not I'm not surprised or shocked. Uh, I mean they have uh, Westworld, the new season coming out. So Correct. They're, they're, season not, three. they're not really worried about this. I mean they know people are going to come and watch whenever they release it. Yeah, and they also have that superhero uh, show. What's it called? Those Watchmen. Um, the Watchmen also is that, is that HBO or Showtime? That or? I thought that was HBO. That's Showtime. I mean, I'm sorry, that's HBO. That's HBO? Yeah, oh, okay. that's HBO. So they have a couple of shows. They also have Barry. Uh, they have, um, you know, some good series. That, uh, Barry, the... the you yeah, know, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know the Assassin. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, that's another good show that's coming out with the new season. So they have a couple of shows lined up. I'm not surprised they're also pushing this back. And I think they want to take their time after the disastrous last season of Game <laughs> of Thrones. Lose, are you okay? 
You, you yeah, look, I'm good. You look like a sweaty Papa John right now. Like it's because he, you it's because he got sick, caught cheating. Dude. It's because he got caught cheating. You, okay. Yeah, something. Uh, you don't look right. I, I am a sweaty Papa John right now. Okay. All right. Well, anyways, Game of Thrones. <laughs> House of Dragons coming out in 2022. Uh, let's let's end pop right there and let's move into sports. Touchdown! <laughs> it's a home run. Touchdown! Go! Kansas. Touchdown! Kansas City. Oof! Oof! All right, so NFL just, playoffs, boys. Yeah, let me just hop into it. NFL first, playoffs, boys. The first game. The new the new Atlanta Falcons, boys. <laughs> straight up, straight hey, up. but you know what? Oh man! Oh, that's right! Oh man, I was ready for this one. So let me. There let me, is no Texan fan, ladies and gentlemen. Before this game even started, the week before, if anybody follows any of these foods on Twitter, it was all hate. It was all fuck this team. It was all this blah 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 blah. And the next thing you know, they move into the next round, and they're like, "Oh, let's go Texans!" Fuck out well, here. Let's let's go ahead and, and, and review that. So everyone who's <laughs> ever seen me on Twitter knows I hate Bill O'Brien. He's a horrible coach. He's the reason why I sold my season tickets. He's the reason why I don't go to the games anymore because I'm not going to pay for a dumbass coach. Hey, don't that worry about it. We got the XFL, baby. We're going to get our tickets. We're going to go watch him. All right, $24. <laughs> let's go. <laughs> well, I'm sure so, that coach is better than Bill O'Brien. I, I guarantee it. 100%. Yeah. Well, let's go ahead and just touch base on it. So the Texans went against the Kansas City. They were at Kansas City. They hop uh, open. What, what, to, what round is this? I'm sorry. This is the second round. This is division round. Division round. Division yeah. round. Okay, so uh, the, the Texans go in there. They're up 24. They're actually up 21. The coach decides at the – In the uh, first quarter. Boys. In the first quarter. On Yo, I was watching that with my girlfriend. I was like, what the fuck is going on Texans here? Texans were whooping And she was ass. all happy. I'm like, bro, it's the first quarter. Calm down. It's not No, no. You know, <laughs> you know what? Matter of fact, and those can attest to this, we literally were like – we were scared – and the reason why we were scared was because of this. We were like, how is Bill O'Brien going to fuck up this game? <laughs> we literally were like, we're too, we're doing too good. Oh, you, oh, you, have one job. You, one job. You, 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 one job. Now, you one. took care of one main part, which was just getting us the lead. Great job. Good job, team. Now maintain. You did half of your job you got to do is just you don't even got to like <laughs> be aggressive you know be, all be you have aggressive. to do is avoid 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 using the lead avoid uh, his whole bill o'brien's whole lifetime has led to this point his whole conservative play that he's done for the last fuck ton of years finally it's going to pay off cuz if you play the same way bill you're going to win well, let you me. Fuck let me explain what he does. In the, so we're up 21-0. We're at the 20-yard line on their territory. Yeah. We're fourth and one. Okay. We're winning. They're quiet. You step on their throats and you kill them. Okay. You go for it. No, he decides to be conservative and he and he shoots a field goal. Next thing you know, they do a punt return, 50 yards, and they get a touchdown out of that. We get the ball back. Okay. In the ball back on our 20-yard line. On a fourth and the third, he, he decides to do a trick play. So they already have a little bit of momentum on their side. Now you just gave them all the momentum, and after that, they couldn't stop the tsunami the, of Kansas the City. The fourth and one, the fourth and one mm. on the 17-yard line, and he decides to kick a field goal after calling the timeout because he was trying to decide what the hell to do. Two timeouts. Then he goes to the press conference after that and says, I, I, I just didn't uh, think we had a good play for that. S seriously, bro? A, 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 a less than a yard mm. for first down to potentially drive and make it a 28 to zero game. Uh, kind of put like stop. Put you have their your foot on their neck and basically like mm. Bruce Lee and kind of finish him. You know uh, he didn't do it, but he wants to go for fourth down on a fake punt back at your own 30 something and. I mean, just it's Bill O'Brien is a disease to this team. Agreed. I mean, I love Watson. I, I love mean, Watson J.J. Watt played the best he could. All right, man. There was uh, other teams the uh, that played that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can. So, point is, so <laughs> point is, Bill O'Brien killed Point is, is fire, fire Bill O'Brien. So, then we also had the, I think, the biggest upset of the playoffs. 
uh, Tennessee went to Baltimore and Tennessee. stomped. Tennessee. Oh on my Baltimore. god! Um, I was just on the Patriots. Uh, I was just talking about them uh, early or today. Uh, yes, they went up against. The favorites, Baltimore Ravens. No, I mean, um, uh, JP MVP. and I had actually a discussion about the the week before. He even yeah. said like, like Patriots have been been playing all that well, and like, and then they have injuries, and it's just, I mean, and well, then, and then supposedly there was like controversy between Belichick and Brady. Yes, and that's why they got beat. They got beat, but then Tennessee went to Baltimore. Now keep yeah. in mind, Baltimore. Who the cares about seed. the Patriots? Yeah, oh, Patriots oh, oh, shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, so they went to Baltimore and they they beat the MVP and Lamar Jackson and they beat him bad. They basically at his house at his house. They basically showed the NFL and all these stupid ass announcers that talk all this stupid shit and hype up running quarterbacks that running quarterbacks can't do shit no, 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 in the no. playoffs. He's gonna win the MVP and he yeah. deserves the MVP, but he's not winning no Super Bowl because he. He had a great regular season. You're he right. Mm-hmm. He, he, did. he did. The whole he team, though. That whole team did not play well. I'm not just gonna put it all on 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 on. Uh, well, he throws uh, the ball, right? Jackson. He throws the ball, right? True, true. But and those, it's not and those all passes him. weren't accurate. That those whole team did accurate. not play well. This that whole team did not play well. First of all, no one could st- stop the run game of Tennessee, and I don't see that happening anytime soon. The Texans um, stopped them at their house. Uh yeah, no. uh, I don't see anybody <laughs> stopping the the Tennessee run game. Um, what's his name? Uh, the running back, Derrick Henry. Derrick Henry looks like a beast out there, bro. Like he's making these 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 men look like boys. He's making it his game. Uh, and he went up against a pretty yeah. damn good defense yeah. and destroyed them. I mean, yeah. what was it, 180 yards? It was 185 yards. Wow. So basically, freaking destroyed them. Yeah, but so at this point, and Tannehill time, is just looking better every week. Oh right, um, Tannehill, I, man, good job leaving Miami. Jesus, work hard, <laughs> work hard. Yeah, it just shows the in- inequities of the Miami organization. You have Tannehill. You have a lot of good players in that team, and yet you couldn't win. You couldn't build a team around yeah. them. Now Tannehill's actually with a good coach, Vrabel, who I got to give a lot of props to. Out coach um, Belichick, out coach uh, Harbaugh. John Harbaugh. I mean, but keep in mind, John Harbaugh uh, took three weeks off. So he rested his starters hey, the I'm last sorry. week. Hey. And then he got a bye week. Out coach. Out coach. So coach. here's what I'll say. You know, congrats to Tennessee. They're in the AFC Championship. They're going against Kansas City. Uh, I think Kansas City is going to win this game. Nope. Uh, uh, I, I think you're wrong. I think Tennessee's going to whoop that ass. I don't Ooh. really care. I really don't care who wins. I think it's going kind to of, be Kansas City. Um, and that's why I have win the AFC division. So let's go to the NFC. In the NFC, we had uh, Seattle go against Green Bay. Uh, Green Bay stomped on that ass, smacked that Disappointing. ass. Disappointing. I mean, Seattle didn't bad. show up. Russell Wilson supposedly, I mean, you know, was having a great season. He, I mean, not supposedly, he was having a great season, yeah. making a lot of plays. Yeah, beast just mode did back. not show up against Green Bay. Can't yeah, so that. Green Bay just dominated, and then not only that, 49ers uh, against the Vikings mm. dominated that game as well. The the 49ers are 49ers one of the favorites. to me are the are are the favorites to come out of the because they have again that good run game. Garoppolo is consistent. I'm not going to say he's like yeah, oh, one of the elite QBs, but when it comes down to him making plays, he's making them. Oh, wow. uh, and th- their defense is solid. Uh, yeah, man, I-, I have 49ers beating Green Bay. I think re- Green Bay, they have, have that Green one. Bay. I have Green Bay beating the 49ers. And because of they one They have that person. one guy. Exactly. Have, that I'm, one guy. Aaron Rodgers. Like, hey, man. Bad, you need bad, a team. Bad. You need a team. That's All right. Bad, uh, bad, I wanted man. to ask you guys, since we were, we were talking about uh, the NFL, what are your thoughts on Lou Keekley retiring at age 28? I think it's um, a bad I think it's a bad look for the NFL. I feel like there a lot of young players are starting to just be in the league for like about five, six, seven years, get their money, and keep their health. I think that's very important. Lou Keekley has had a lot of concussions a mm. lot of injuries, so yeah. it was time for him to go. And I mean, I don't hate on him for that. Uh, I don't think he's gonna qualify for the Hall of Fame, though. Um, nah, he he retired too young for that. He retired too young, but 
at the same time, I'd rather forego that by maintaining my sanity and being able to walk and, and take care of my body. So I understand his point. So Some of the wisest words I've ever heard spoken out of your mouth, JP. <laughs> uh, I just got done... <laughs> I just got done uh, listen, uh, watching, I'm sorry, uh, that documentary on Netflix about Aaron Hernandez. No, I don't and, care about that. And, um, you know, uh, they talk, they focus a little bit on CTE, uh, which is that disease that you get from concussions. How yeah. can it affect the mentality, the, the mental health of these players? And I don't blame anyone, man, anyone for all the stuff they go through. Not only in the NFL, but bear in mind, these college programs are pro programs, right? You're working mm -hmm. out day in, day out. You're playing tough-ass games. Um, you know, so to go through your whole career playing football and getting hit like that, this is the most violent sport in the – in well, other than UFC. Mm -hmm. uh, the, one of the most violent sports in the world Um I don't blame anyone uh, uh, for for retiring early. I mean, hey man, take care of yourself, like JP said. You know, UFC, yeah. you you play, you fight maybe two times in a year. Maybe. No, they they said it's and, like UFC is a lot more. It's a lot safer than the football games because, uh, and then the NFL, the even the equipment is like it's heavy. It's it's a weapon. I mean, in, in the yeah. UFC, the only weapon you have is your fist. Yeah, in the UFC, you get concussed, the match is over. Yeah. Um, you fight maybe twice a, twice a year, so if you do maybe. get concussed, you Sometimes have time. Sometimes once. You, yeah. You, exactly. You have time to recuperate. In the NFL, you're going at it every week. If you had a concussion that no one caught the, the game before, you're playing again the next week. So. Yeah. Very dangerous sport, man. Uh, I don't blame these uh, these players uh, for retiring early, and I expect a lot a lot more of it. And the NFL better start taking care of their players because otherwise they're gonna see more of this. All right. right. Speaking of retirement and or for forced fired, the Astros owner God. Jim Crane has said, "You know what? Get the." Out of my office, get off my baseball right, field. Cheating ass, ass, cheating ass, ass no cheating good ass for nothing. Dumb ass don't know how to cheat properly and not okay. get caught because everybody does. Get all right, out. all right, all right. <laughs> let me let me go through. So, uh, the MLB investigation bye. was concluded. Bye bye. Determined that uh, the Astros were using tactics to get signals. Give it out to the players, whatever the case may be, um, and decided to penalize uh, the coach of the Astros, uh, Hinch, General, General um, Leno, the general manager, each suspended for one year. Yeah. Uh, took away the first and second round draft picks for the next two two drafts. Yep. And fined them five million dollars. Yep. So. Some people say that wasn't enough. It's not. They Some people say that was too harsh. Nope. Um, immediately after the MLB announcement of the of their investigation and findings and penalties, um, Jim Crane came out on a conference and and just fired Ban Hammers, the greatest. Yeah, Ban Hammer fired Hinch and Leno, the best coach. And GMs the Astros ever had, so took a lot of balls for him to do that because no one was really expecting that. I, I think immediately after those announcements, people were expecting them to just serve out their pro, their suspensions and come back. Crane wasn't having it, doesn't want cheaters in the organization, uh, immediately fired them. So I, uh, I, res I respect Crane. Uh, let me, let me, so boom, fire them. Uh, the investigation also linked uh, Cora, Excellent. who is the ML, uh, the Red Sox manager. Mm -hmm. uh, he was then fired, mm -hmm. and also they implicated Beltran, who's mm -hmm. with the squad before, who is now the Mets uh, coach. Yep. Uh, also, uh, let go, or it, it sounded like he quit because he knew he was going to get fired. So. Um, Justin and Tat, the investigation also revealed that the Red Sox might have done stuff. 
Uh, there's rumors that the Yankees did stuff. It, it's a widespread issue. And, I mean, yes, I don't want it to continue in the league. So I think the MLB had to do what they had to do. I think Jim Crane had to do what he had to do. Uh, this doesn't tarnish the 2017 World Series yes, at all. Does. Uh, Astros yes, it all day, Stop. every day. Yes, it does. Uh, but, yeah, you you you've spoken enough. Yeah. You've spoken enough. Anyways, so let look, me let me let me take let me take it. Okay, first off, cheating is cheating. Cheating is they cheating. Got, they got caught. You got They're caught. Cheating. Everybody does it. Okay. Everybody better, does. Hey, so there'll be, there be better I, cheaters then. Don't yeah, get caught. Be better, yeah, be no better cheaters. <laughs> Everybody so, does it. If everybody does it, be better cheaters. I want to give a huge shout out to MOB for being really harsh. I wish the NFL would have been that harsh with Bill Belichick. Yep. They would have fired him because he got caught cheating three times. Shit ton of uh, times. Nope. We already know that Lowe's likes cheaters. Yep. He likes the Houston Astros and the Patriots. Yep. So this is all facts. Uh, now, as Check far as uh, Jim Crane, I respect Jim Crane for doing that. I don't care Very, about baseball. I respect him. Base, baseball can kiss my ass. Uh, honestly, the reality is everyone does it in baseball. I'm glad they're coming down hard. Um, but at the end of the day, I hope they take the ring away from the Houston Astros. Yep. I don't think they Not deserve it. Um, and if they do do Too that, bad. I will enjoy it simply because of the fact all these fake bandwagon fans – that hopped on the Astros that year. Uh, you will see Los not watching baseball in two years if they take that ring away. Go ahead, <laughs> uh, Cheaters never win. Uh, anyway, so it just looks like <laughs> well, the Astros. <laughs> it looks like the it looks like the Astros are pretty much are the the scapegoats for this whole situation because everybody, like we just said, everybody in the NFL, um, NFL MLB does it. Correct. So if anything, this is just setting the example for anybody else who wants to continue doing this type of uh, like uh, strategy, quote unquote. Uh, shouts out to the MLB again. Shouts out to Shout Jim out. Crane. You know, even though he didn't have to, he did it. Because he knew yeah. he was the right thing to he do. He was better than Robert Kraft. Way better. Uh, and way better Robert than Robert Kraft. Kraft. Robert Kraft celebrated by going to a massage parlor. Yeah, and he got caught. <laughs> <laughs> he got caught cheating. And he got caught cheating. And he got caught I agree. Even, I agree with the Astros being the scapegoat. <laughs> yes, the whole league does it. But I still respect the MLB decision. I respect Jim Crane's decision. It's all good. Astros will be back in the World Series next year. No, they won't. And you can clip this. Okay. Well, I mean, hey, look, if they are, as long as they don't do it cheating, uh, I think they'll be fine. And if they win, then they won't be cheating. Uh, but uh, Moving on, ladies and gentlemen, that is it for sports. We're going to find ourselves in the final section of the podcast. Gaming. Sound effects. <laughs> <laughs> Game over. All right. This is a beefy one, ladies and gentlemen. Sony will not be at E3 2020 Man, Sony. Once again. Fuck Sony. Wah, wah, wah. It's just... No. Yeah, go ahead, man. Okay. E3, we've been seeing it. It's on the decline. Like, they're... E3's just not doing it right. E3 doesn't have dedicated media days. You know, and, and they don't have dedicated fan days. They just mix it all together. So why would PlayStation want to put their biggest presentation that will literally decide the next six, seven, eight years of their business on in the hands of the E3 board, which, to be honest, doesn't know how to run a conference. I've heard uh, many people tell me that the conference... I've, I've heard many people tell me that uh, the conference in Europe, what's it called? Um... In Germany, uh, I, I think I know what you're talking about. Uh, 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 something Gamescom, which is, yeah, Gamescom, which is like way bigger than the E3 conference, is better managed. So you have way more people coming into Gamescom, and it's managed way better. Mm -hmm. But E3 having less people can't seem to manage those situations. I don't blame PlayStation. You you do the call on your own terms. Make the presentation however you want. Mm -hmm. In your when people are watching your presentation, it's not at all of E3. I think it's the right call. Um, I've hearing rumors on Twitter that the they they should be really revealing new information in the next month. So that's pretty early. Um, and I think that's how they're gonna start it off, giving you a full presentation early in the year, 
and giving new information throughout the year. That's uh, why. But, but waiting until yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry. It 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 doesn't matter. It, this E3 is not for them. It's for us. It's for us. And exactly. It's a big advertisement. It's the easiest way to have everything all together at once. Correct. And for we can all like enjoy it. Yes, for them it doesn't make sense really nowadays. Yes, they're mixing it all together, and it like some of the people there are just like we want it just to be an industry thing. Like we don't want to be there with people who have nothing to do with the business side. They're just they're just the consumers. I understand that. Uh, E three needs to change that around. Uh, maybe like do what Gamescom is doing. I don't know, but the thing is, is like I I see this as like the Super Bowl in gaming in video games. I see this as like the hugest event. Of well, it's every, falling off every it, it, year. It's falling off a bit. Like we get, it's falling off recently because the next gen is coming, so they're not showing a lot right now. But like we get to see, like within a week, we get to see what PlayStation has, what Xbox has, what Nintendo has, what uh, other PC small uh, smaller developers and just indie developers have coming up for the next year, for the remaining of the year and the future. Now Sony is like has uh pretty much uh all new leadership all around them uh they're moving they moved their company from uh, what was it uh, uh japan to to the states um it's just a whole shift in in their the way they're doing things they have so much clout right now because of the playstation 4 whatever they do they're not going to fail it doesn't matter but as far as e3 it, it's not for them it, it's for us dude like I love the presentations they do, like when, especially when uh, when Sony was doing the extra shit with the Last of Us Two stuff, or um, when they had the orchestra orchestra behind them, and you know they were doing presentations like that with the music, like and when we went to go see, dude, when we went to go see the fucking presentation at the movie theaters, like bro, and we saw Res lit. Resident Evil Seven, like that shit was sick. Like I bro, love I love the way they put it all sick. together. Like that's what I'm saying. It's not for them. It's for us. And like now they're taking that away from us, and now they're just doing this fucking directs that I just sit on YouTube and watch. Like, uh, bro, I mean, I, I of course, well, okay. I'm let, let me get let me, let me get my second here. Number yeah, one, go ahead, go ahead. number one, e, uh, everything you said, uh, Elias is valid, but really, E3 doesn't need Sony. Let's be quite frank here. <laughs> last last year, uh, it went just fine. Uh, Cyberpunk 2077. Nah, Keanu Reeves. Keanu Reeves. Yeah, Keanu Reeves. Tired. That was so, about it. So I mean, <laughs> I, really, really, I could care less about Sony. The majority of games that come out on Xbox come out on Sony anyway. Mm -hmm. um, so it's not something special. Uh, Last of Us. Everyone already knows they've been playing that shit for like what five, six, seven years already. To me, Sony is just a running company, just trying to look out for themselves. They always yep. have. They never really cared about the gamers. That's why it's never been a gaming console. It's been a movie console. Um, I've mm. always considered it. Oh, that's I've always, uh, <laughs> I've, I've always considered yeah. a movie console. Uh, when it comes to real gamers, we already know, and everyone knows this. Xbox let's, is where it's let's at. Let's not forget. No, I'm just kidding. So let's I mean, not forget that Xbox had to back everything they said. Yep. At an E3 because fans were hating on them because mm -hmm. they were the ones focused on. Entertainment but at least they had the streaming. balls. At least I had the balls to go to E3. And no, go they out. had to because no one was going to buy that shit anyway. So they had to go well, back they, I'm to glad. using CDs. Imagine if we did that. Imagine if we did that. Imagine if we did that with DLCs. Imagine if gamers bitched about DLCs. Imagine. Then we make oh, they change. do. Look at Pokemon. They do. Mm. But like <laughs> I said, like I said uh, everyone knows this. Uh, I'm not really – I don't really care about uh, Sony that much. They're always trying to be the one company mm -hmm. that's different from the others, different. Uh, no, I mean, that's. I think that's everybody, though. Nintendo does stupid. their own thing. Sony does their own thing. The thing about Xbox, though, is that they're not they're not grandfathered in like they're the more the more newest of the of the consoles. So for them, it's a little bit harder to be, get that foothold in. I mean, we can just see that already with like the up and coming consoles that came and have gone like the fucking Ouya fucking Dreamcast. Uh, even though Dreamcast was from Sega, Stadia. like it, it, it felt like it wasn't ready yet. <laughs> Fucking Stadia, R.I.P. already. I mean, uh, it's just that it, it feels no like spotted. it feels like like these other, no, other have consoles it. have been grandfathered in. They already have their their mascots and whatnot, and their lines of like uh, like uh, exclusive stuff. Like it's just it's difficult to to do something new, something crazy, and like not have it seem like you're copying somebody. 
I don't no, know. No, I mean, I I'll just say, I'll just say this: E3 isn't its downfall. I mean, E3 is going to be fine this year. Yeah. Right. People, companies are going to be there. Yeah. But it isn't its downfall because just like Nintendo first did, just like Sony now is doing, uh, these companies don't need E3 to advertise their games. They get yeah. a, probably even more publicity if they do it on a slow week and they do their own direct. So, um. It, you know, we'll see. Uh, if E3 doesn't change its format, then it's not going to survive. But whatever, that's their problem. All right. Uh, well, either way, we're, uh-huh. we're in the midst of console wars, and it's going to get good. New Smash Bros. DLC, DLC was announced today, actually, Another on one? the 16th. Uh, Los, our resident uh, Nintendo dick writer, uh, what do you have to say about what happened? Uh yeah, new uh DLC, new character for Smash, uh, Violet from Fire Emblem uh, Three Houses. Mm-hmm. Not the announcement everybody was kind of wanting. Uh, but I mean it's cool. Uh, they did show off its move, you know their moves, uh, play style. That yeah. was pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, it is kind of unique. Uh, but. Maybe not the announcement everybody was waiting for. What was cool is that they did announce that they're doing another year of new characters. So they're doing a, they did a season one pass. So if you bought that, you got everybody. You're gonna get Violet, who comes out later this month, January 28th. Mm-hmm. Um, but if now, then you're gonna be able to buy the season two pass, which get, will get you six new characters. For Ooh. the next, I don't know two what. Years. I, think uh, they, I think they plan for the next two years. Yeah, that sounds about right. So a lot of content still going to be coming to Smash. Yeah, because I think Sakurai said that this is like the last Smash they're going to be doing, right? Or something like that. I wouldn't be surprised if this is the last one, man. I mean, what else can you do, really? You can't top this one uh, unless you just keep porting it to the next system and porting it to the next system. Um but I think this is it, man. And Sak- uh, Sakurai, who knows how much he has left in him. <laughs> I feel like the guy's on the on the midst of retiring. He's yeah. worked his ass on. Yeah. Um, but yeah, this this might very well be the last one because no way you get all these publishers, all these companies to work together again and let you borrow their properties. So yeah, I mean, enjoy while it lasts because this might be the last one. And uh, yeah, it looks like another couple of years, year and a half of mm-hmm. uh, content coming to the. That's what I'm most excited about. I mean, I'm excited for Violet, but I'm more excited to see what what else they got up their sleeves. Uh, All right, well, it, it I might guess be pretty good for sure for that. Master um, Chief, Master Chief, man. Delay season. We have so many delays this week. Oh, if it what what did it start with? With fucking Square Final Enix, Fan- uh, Square Final Enix Fantasy announcing Final Fantasy. Final Fantasy VII and Marvel's Avengers delayed. And like the first one, like the Marvel's Avengers one, was like until September. I was like, eh, that's okay. That's not bad. Save that's me some bad. money for <laughs> like the beginning of the year. But yeah. then to be other, honest, mm-hmm. Avengers looks like it needs to work. So yeah, I'm, I'm I think I think it does. And then we also have Final Fantasy VII Remake being delayed, what, a month or something like that? A month. A month. That's yeah. not bad. And then, not a big deal. And then, and then, like, what, a day or two later, Cyberpunk 2077 delayed for that one September. Hurts. September. September. That, that one hurts. I was like, at first it was like, oh, okay, it's going to be Final Fantasy VII, and then a week later, Cyberpunk. Now, <laughs> it's Final Fantasy VII, then in a couple of months, Cyberpunk. Um, it comes out in September. Um... Uh, Spider-Man came out in September. What was it 2018? Spider-Man didn't really win a much that much rewards awards during like the award season for video games. Cyberpunk 77 is coming out late in the game as far as rewards are concerned. I, I mean, oh, I think I it comes know. out in a good know. time. I don't know what it's going to do I, to it. And they, they did they did announce so there is going to be multiplayer coming to the game just not right away. Yeah, 2021. Um I like it, man. I feel like hey man, this is a game we're all waiting for, that the industry is waiting for, fans are waiting for. Work on it all you want, man. Take all the time you need. Yeah. If you need to push it back months, hey, man, by all means, please do it. Because I want Cyberpunk to be like a like a crazy step up for the genre, yeah. for gaming. So if they need uh, you know, six months, whatever it is the pushback was to, to make it better, yeah. I'm all in, man. I, I don't have uh, a problem with it. 
I think that it wouldn't surprise me if Cyberpunk gets delayed even more. Um, it wouldn't surprise me if all these games are delayed a little bit more. Oh, okay. I, I have a feeling that uh, this is all based on the new council, the new consoles that are coming out. September is very close to November, which we know Xbox likes to come out with their new systems. Yeah. Uh, so it would not surprise me if they pushed it back to not only have a good game to sell for Xbox, but to also have their console. Yeah. So it, it just means more money to them. I think it's just a money grab move to get I the fans more pumped up for it. Because the they know Cyberpunk the release. Cyberpunk released a statement saying that the game is the 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 core is done, right? They said in their statement, it's like Night City is is done, but yeah. there's like little things polish that we want to make sure are up to par of our standards. And they're like, they even said it, it's a wide open world. Yeah, there's so much things to do. We want to make sure everything's working in conjunction. Now, are they going to make a port for the new systems? I wouldn't be surprised if they did. Are they taking this delay to make the ports for the new systems? Uh, that's a, I mean, maybe. But to be honest, with at least with Cyberpunks, I don't know about Square Enix and their releases, but the... I feel like uh, what's the what's the name of the developers from Cyberpunk? It's uh, uh CD Project Red. CD Project. Red. CD Project. CD Project has a great track record, bro, of look of being fan first. Like they do things fan first. When it came to Witcher Three and like they gave out a bunch of free content for the fans. They I mean they do a lot of things for the fans, man. So. That I mean, that company specifically, I have a hard time believing they're doing a move just to make more money. Do I think the game's going to be ported to the new consoles? Yeah, why not? Why wouldn't it be? But I do yeah. think they are taking this time to really make the game better and make it better for us. Well, I hope so. I hope yeah, so. I hope so too, man. All right, then that's going to be wrapping it up for today's episode. Uh, what is it? Los's final punch? Any final punches, ladies and gentlemen? Man. <laughs> My final punch is people stop complaining about D damn DLCs. Wow. If you don't like it, don't buy it. Stop going. You're harassing developers literally. Come on, man. Do something better with your life. Go watch some Pornhub and jack off. But stop, stop harassing developers. And if you don't like the DLC, don't fucking buy it. Lit. Simple as that. Well, uh, my punch out is uh, Houston Astros cheated. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> I got nothing. Peace. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for listening and watching. Of course, Thanks, you can guys. find us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and our YouTube channel is the Three Way Podcast. We all, our main podcast is also on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, uh, Anchor. Of course, allowing us to come to every and all podcasting platforms. For free. Check yes, out. And, and by the way, guys, we will be doing uh, the Bad Boys uh, for Life uh, review for the Hump Day show, so keep it out. What? Right. This is the first I hear of it. All right, bye. Peace. Peace. Yeah, we're going to be doing me and Logan watch Bad Boys.